Well, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to Gord Wilson's Baja Life. I'm Flash Gordon Wilson with Baja Life Realty here in beautiful La Paz, BCS, Mexico. Well, one of my clients that came to me in late 2022, shortly after I got my license and we established our lives here in La Paz, was a Canadian fella named Brad. And Brad came to me and said, I'm just after a piece of land. We got to work right away and we looked at a lot of different chunks of land, a lot of different price point options, a lot of different size options before Brad settled on this amazing 612 square meter plot of land right on the cusp between Chametla and El Centenario. It's super close to the shopping district, only a quick jaunt to downtown and the Malacan, and it's only a stone's throw from some great beaches and water activities. So I also found out deep into the transaction that Brad was actually partnering with a family member back in Canada. So what you're looking at behind me is just half of Brad's Paradise Oasis. This is actually where Braden comes in and the sky's the limit on what he's gonna do. For now, Brad's got all of this over here. Well, one memorable moment while Brad and I were looking at different options for pieces of land for him to buy came when I said, so Brad, what are your plans to build once you have your piece of land? And he kind of leaned back and he looked at me quizzically and he said, well, no, Gord, I'm not going to build anything. I just want a cool place to park my RV. And so as we chatted about that more, I learned Brad had a really nice newer RV, but he wanted to be able to use it as an RV and travel around and, and go to different places on the Baja and really soak up and explore and experience the Mexican culture. Recently, I came out to have a coffee with Brad and I was blown away to see what he had done with this piece of land. He had gotten a guy in right away that helped him build a fence around the entire property. He had trucked in a few trucks of gravel. He had gotten a Tanaco for water storage and hooked up a sewage system. He had set up solar panels. He put a really secure storage shed. He built a cover for his vehicle. He maintained and kept the most beautiful, exquisite, old Cardon cactus on the property. And now he's got multiple sitting areas, little pathways. It's just absolutely awesome. And so I rushed home and said, Caitlin, we gotta make a video about this and show off Brad's success. Overall, this place is just super duper impressive and it's inspiring to me to see what somebody can do by just buying a piece of land and making it into their own little oasis here in La Paz. And Brad will be able to tell you more about it than I could. So this is my client, Brad, from Canada. So Brad, what brought you to Mexico? Uh, Gord, for me, the, the main reason I came to Mexico was endless summer. Yeah. Uh, I'm a summer guy coming from Canada where we have pretty distinct seasons and a very short summer, regardless of where you are. I'm from BC, so you know, we probably had the longest summer anywhere in Canada, but it was still too short for me. So the, the prime driver for me was to choose a country that was close to home, which uh, the Baja is, obviously. Uh, cost of living. Uh, and I checked out a lot of places before I came down here. I looked at Panama. I looked at uh, Dominican, uh, Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic. I uh, looked at Ecuador, even looked at India. And, mm. you know, every place I, I looked at had its pros and cons, but by far Mexico uh, was the ideal solution if you wanted to live in a uh, an area that did, that did have an endless summer. And here in La Paz, good paddleboarding. Yeah, uh, you can paddleboard every day here for the whole year. So I was telling Caitlin earlier that uh, there was a moment during our dealings very early on when you were looking for land, when I said, so what are you going to build? And you said, well, I'm not going to build. I'm going to park my RV yeah. and then yeah. do some <laughs> landscaping. So I love everything you've done here. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about the setup? Well, you, you already mentioned it, Gordon, was the landscaping. I'm a big green thumb guy. I kind of get that from my mom. And, you know, growing up in BC where you have a long growing season, uh, I, I kind of got the bug there young. So coming on to a bare piece of land, even in Mexico where it's fairly dry, uh, one of the big things I was looking at uh, that I knew I would enjoy here is planting things and just watching them grow. Awesome. Yeah. And and I've noticed they're almost all like local flora, lots of different kinds of cacti and yeah. things that don't require a lot of yeah, water. For and, sure. That, that's the uh, big thing. And it's one of the things that I think everybody does have to consider. 
if you're coming on a bare piece of land and you do want to grow things, you have to make some conscious decisions about what it is that you want to grow. If you want to have good, uh, good water management, right? Because if you're planting things that are going to need a lot of water, uh, you know, that's going to be expensive after a Got while. It. And so what else do you want to do? Because you've only been here six months. Yeah. Uh, you've been setting it up for yeah. like four months. Yeah, four, more or less. Four sure. months. So what's next? Uh, a couple things. One thing I would like to do is uh, a proper sunshade over the RV. And that's mm -hmm. another consideration for anybody who's looking at kind of doing what I did here, especially in an RV, because it's very hard to keep them cool. When it's hot, you can be running the AC constantly. And it's not going to really cool off the interior. It's just a big metal box. Got it. So if you're coming onto a bare piece of land like I did, and you're still growing things that are going to give you natural shade at some point in the future, you have to really give some serious consideration to how you're going to shade your uh, your RV. Or even if it's just a little casa, a casita, you have mm -hmm. to figure out how you're going to shade that as well. So for me, from a, a comfortable uh, being comfortable perspective, uh, the, the next big thing for me is to build a proper pergola or sunshade over the RV. Cool. Yeah. And one of those ones where you can take some stairs up and sit up top. Yeah. On a really nice. Right uh, around the corner. There's a guy that's got one. From here. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, you can see the mountains from here. You can see the water. Uh, and another thing is, you know, I'm under a 150 year old cactus and, and those cactus, branches or whatever they are are super heavy right yeah, yeah yeah so as a uh, from the perspective of protecting my rv as an investment you don't want a cactus falling on it Got so it. if you build a proper metal structure over the top that becomes part of your sunshade and your second level that also gives some some protection to the rv so what advice might you have for other foreigners who might be inspired by your story and decide they'd like to come and try setting up life in Mexico. Yeah, probably the same thing that a lot of people told me before I came down, Gord, was, which was uh, try before you buy. Yeah, uh, It's a big thing. It's a, you know, and this will kind of lead into the rest of my answer. It's a different culture down here. Uh, it's much slower and you have to be able to adapt to that. You're a guest in Mexico, a Spanish country. That's the lifestyle. If you're not able to slow down in pretty well every respect in regards to living here, if you're working with contractors, if you're buying things, if you're just generally trying to get set up, things down here work at a different speed. And you have to be able to understand the cultural aspect of that. Because if you don't, you're going to get frustrated. And again, we come back to try before you buy. So you you, you got you to dip your toe in the water before you make the big investment. I, I love that it's, advice. Yeah, it's, it's and I think it's respecting the the different type of Absolutely. lifestyle as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think the Mexican people have, you know, there's, there, why would they have the expectation they have to adapt to us as foreigners in their country? We <laughs> have to adapt to, to being in their country as as their guests. I tell a lot of folks, it's muy tranquilo yeah, here. It's it, just super chilled out, very really relaxed is. lifestyle. Um, some people seem to get a little uh, annoyed if you're in a rush. Because why are you in a rush? Yeah, why are you in a <laughs> rush? Right. So, yeah, that's a big thing down here is you you have to be able to adapt to that. Yeah. And definitely understand the, the cultural differences and be respectful of the people whose country we're living in. I, for one, have loved that difference because I think one of the things that was really annoying both Caitlin and I back home was all the hustle, all the keeping up um, with the Joneses, constant, all the like, go, yeah. go, 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 go. And like the, the concept of hustle culture to me is just not good for yeah. your for your mental health. No, and it's not. So it's been really nice to uh, adapt to this lifestyle. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, cool. Uh, so if anyone's coming down, you know, you, you would be made to feel welcome here by the Mexican people. But again, you have to be able to understand what their culture is all about so you can fit in and, you know, become uh, a contributor to their culture growing. Right. Because that's Come part down of it too. for some trips first. Yeah. Come and have some visits. Let me take you on a neighborhood tour yeah. and uh, really kind of soak it all up and get used to it. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, it's it's my been pleasure. a pleasure working with you yeah. from the get go. And I'm happy to say, as with almost all of my clients so far in this amazing year of, of real estate in Mexico, Brad surpassed client 
relationship and now we're buddies and yeah. we've been hanging out. <laughs> we came out and played Rummy Cube a couple of weeks ago and looking forward to many yeah. more. Oh yeah, you guys are welcome here anytime. Well, thanks so, a lot, man. My pleasure. Cheers. Well, thanks so much for joining in with this tour through Brad's Oasis. I hope you'll like, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.